Hey guys, what's up? It's Dave Marshall from the RC Air Marshall YouTube channel. Hey, today we're going to be uh, doing a quick review of something that nobody has but everybody needs. Let's get right to it. All right, guys, so what we're looking at is the FD200 200 watt smart discharger, uh, and this is made by ISDT. Now, I know a lot of folks who will charge their batteries. They get like all their batteries running and the next thing you know, it rains, they can't go to the field and now they've got to discharge all their batteries. And you wouldn't imagine, you wouldn't believe how many people will tell me, oh, I'll just put them on my charger. Well, the thing is, the chargers usually discharge at about 10 watts, right? And they take forever. Some of them don't even discharge that high. It may be five watts, it may be 10, it may be 15. You'll be lucky if you find a charger that discharges at 20 watts. Now there's a few exceptions to the rule, but typically that's about how, uh, how they discharge. This guy will discharge at 200 watts, which means that we can discharge a battery in a fraction of the time. So, you know, if I get home from the field and I wasn't able to, uh, to discharge all my batteries, I pop them on this thing one at a time, and you know, typically I can discharge all of my batteries within an hour. Um, it, you know, where if you're using one of those, uh, you know, a charger, it could take all day to discharge one battery. It's ridiculous. So I highly recommend getting the FD200. Now, ISDT does make a smaller charger, but this one has some interesting features that I think you guys are gonna like. Now, the uh, the construction of this thing, it is a little brick. It's quite heavy, and you know it's it's very basic um, as far as the user interface goes. You got two buttons up here. You got a button on the left, which will adjust. Uh, let's get uh, there's lights all up in the way. So you got the button on the left, which will get you. Uh, it will change the current uh, that you're pulling from the battery and a button on the right which will allow you to change the uh, the cell count. Now that's what's available from the buttons. And we'll get to the really nifty part of this guy here in a second. So we're going to go ahead and get a battery hooked up to this thing. Now something that I want to point out is that this uh, ISDT and, uh, and Spectrum uh, joined together, you know, Lord knows how many years ago, uh, to develop what we are currently calling smart technology. Now that's something that ISDT created quite a while ago uh, with something called BADGO. And if you see here on the top of the uh, discharger, you've got that BADGO logo. So basically, this thing has the same smart technology uh, that your uh, that your spectrum uh, smart chargers, uh, smart batteries, uh, your smart uh, battery checkers, smart ESCs, smart receivers. You know they've got a whole smart ecosystem now. The BATGO equipment is compatible with that. There is a small caveat to that though, and that's what I've got right here. Uh, the BATGO system uses XT60 connectors. Now, you know, that was a door for for Spectrum to, uh, or, or Horizon Hobby really, to kind of abandon the whole, um, you know, EC connectors. But no, they made their own, you know, proprietary IC3 and IC5 connections. But the, uh, the BATGO uses a special version of the XT60 and XT90s, and uh, it's called the XT60i. So what I did was I grabbed a... Um, an IC3, uh, let's see, what is this? This is the device connection. So this is what you would have connected to like an ESC or something. It is an IC3 uh, device connector uh, to a XT60i battery connector. All right, so this is something that you will need. Now I made this up and you'll see it's got that center wire. Uh, which allows the serial transmission of data from, say, a smart battery to go into the BATGO uh, device. 
and give us some extra information about the battery. Now we're gonna go ahead and plug this in and get a battery going on this thing so you guys can see what it's all about. Now most of my batteries, I'm running the, uh, the EC3 or EC5 connectors. Uh, it's just something that I have used for years. Uh, and so the IC3 device connector on here will plug right into a, uh, a standard EC3 connection and it works great. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and connect our adapter. And these are some 4S batteries that I've got that I believe still has some charge on them. Let's go ahead and plug them into a battery checker here. So this is one of the, uh, the Spectrum XBC100 smart checkers. We'll go ahead and plug our battery in using the balance leads, just like any other smart checker. And we will see how it's doing. So we can see it's still at about 74%, about 3.98, 3.99 volts per cell. Uh, so this guy is not at a storage charge. So I need to get it discharged. So what we'll do is I'll go ahead and plug my adapter. Now the EC3 connections are compatible with IC3 and we'll see that here. I can go ahead and plug that in. And then we will take this side, which is that XT60i uh, connector, and we will plug that into the smart charger. All right, now, once you get it plugged in, you have to press one of the buttons and it will fire up. Now, when you are adjusting using the manual controls on the front, uh, what we can do is we can use the left button, like I was saying, and the, the LED will turn purple when we're adjusting the current that we're going to, uh, that we're going to discharge the battery at. So let's go ahead and say that we want to discharge at, let's go ahead and say 15 amps. And we use the right button, which will turn the, uh, Sorry, it's not, it's not working how I want it to. Now it's working great. Okay, so that right button uh, adjusts the cell count. Now you can see, um, or you may not be able to see it, but it's got 2S, 3S, 4S, 5S, and 6S. And as we cycle through the different options, you'll see that right now we're on 2S. We press the button, we go to 3S, press it again, go to 4S, 5S, 6s and when we press it again once we get to 6s it actually lights up the 2s and the 5s right so that's actually 7s and 8s batteries right so 6 plus 2. so with this being a 4s battery we will leave it at 4s and we'll go back and check our current which is 15 amps now normally this thing would start up and start discharging the battery but that's not how I have this set up. And we are gonna get into that right now. So this device is Bluetooth enabled. So you will download the ISD Go app from the Google Play or iOS store. And once you open it, you'll see up at the top a little plus button. If you press both buttons on the front of the unit, it'll go into pairing mode. You hit that plus button to pair it. Uh, once you select it, it'll be kind of a darker gray while it syncs up with the device. And now that it's synced up, you can see that it is selected for a 6S battery. Now, that's because the settings in Bluetooth and the settings on the front of the device that you select with the mechanical buttons are different. So they're independent of each other. So what we'll do is we'll hit that little green play button at the bottom, and that brings up our settings. So here we're changing the current to 15 amps, and we will select the cells to select 4S. And then once we're done selecting 4S, we'll hit that little orange go button at the bottom and it will shift from gray over to pink, which denotes that we are now discharging the battery. So you'll see that there's a circle up at the top. The bottom half of that circle will have a meter that shows the percentage of battery life remaining. And the top will show our uh, the wattage that we are discharging at.
So now it's discharging. You can hear the fan running in the back of the uh, discharger. It's got a fairly, uh, it's got two fan units in the back uh, that are, you know, blowing uh, pretty well. And uh, what you can see is a green light flashing on the front of the unit. Now, typically if this were at 100%, all five would be lit up, which means that this guy is pretty much done discharging. Now, as we saw in the setup, we're discharging at 15 amps, and we are uh, set at four cells. So, as the green lights deplete, you know, that would kind of let you know that you have about 20% uh, prior to uh, the end of the charge cycle. So here we're back in the ISD Go app uh, towards the end of the discharge cycle uh, where you can monitor the, uh, the discharge rate. Now you can see the gauge uh, where I was talking about the circle in the upper left hand corner of the, uh, of the app. Uh, we can see that the top gauge is at 198 watts there and it's at 13.3 amps now if we do uh, ohm's law we look at 14 point uh, what 14.99 volts at 13.3 amps it's not going to exceed the uh the current that the uh that the discharge is rated for right so it can only do 200 watts so it stops at 13.3 amps so it's uh it's kind of smart as the name would suggest now um you know once it reaches the end of the charge cycle um, it will go ahead and stop and it will start beeping and the other thing that you'll see here is that I have the uh, the storage voltage I have the cutoff voltage set to 3.75 volts per cell and uh, what it does is it monitors those it will discharge for a little bit and then let them ramp back up and this discharge for a little bit so you'll kind of see that cycle in the wattage it'll drop and then pick back up and then drop and pick back up so uh, that's kind of how it does uh, the very end of the charge or of the discharge cycle. And I believe it's ending here in just a bit. And you know, basically once it's happy uh, that the cells are all kind of equalized at 3.75 volts, uh, it will end the, the discharge cycle now something to keep in mind is this does not do balanced discharging it discharges just like your uh, your vehicle would so whether that's an airplane drone car whatever your esc doesn't plug into the balance leads it has no idea what each cell voltage is and this discharger acts just like your esc it's just pulling current from the battery until it gets down to a specific voltage which it can detect and once it gets down to that low voltage cutoff it shuts off the discharge cycle now once it's done charging it will shift from uh, pink to green now what we'll do is we'll click the settings and you can rename the charger you can check system information you can check the automatic discharge and the automatic discharge is when you uh, first plug in a battery whether or not that discharge cycle will kick on so i went ahead and turned that on so the next time i use it we can just plug a battery in and go we can see here when the charge is complete the uh, five leds will flash green uh, they may not look green but they are and it will beep uh, to let you know that the uh, discharge cycle is complete. Uh, after several cycles, it will uh, finally stop, but uh, you know, it's a pretty cool device. All right guys, so there it is, the ISDT FD200 Smart Discharger. Uh, whether you uh, are a guy that, uh, that really wants to take good care of your batteries, or your guy that charges up a whole lot of batteries and isn't able to go fly for whatever reason, the last thing you want to do is keep your batteries in a charged state. You always want to have them in a storage charge. It's all about safety and longevity of the batteries. If you want to keep your batteries, you know, cycling great for as long as possible, I highly, highly recommend investing the money into one of these uh, discharge devices. Now, this particular one, the price is um you know between 60 and 80 bucks where depending on where you find it 
Uh, don't look on Amazon. They're like 90 something dollars on Amazon. I think I got mine from Banggood and I want to say it was about 70 bucks. Um, you know, and if you can save one battery, uh, this thing can pay for itself pretty quick, you know, with just saving that one battery. So anyway, uh, hope you liked the video guys. Like, share, subscribe. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.